What's going on, Saints fans? Welcome into another live edition of Saints Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, as always, Trace Gerard. Welcome into the live show. We go live every other Wednesday at 3 p.m., so be sure to subscribe, turn on your notifications if you haven't already. But guys, we're going to be talking about a lot of interesting things. We're talking some OTAs, some UDFA stuff. We're going to talk about Frank Clark, and then we're also going to take questions from the Houdat Nation. So I need y'all to get the comment section going. Rapid fire type S for Saints in the comment section. I'm going to get it going first. Mikey Taylor, he's saying, what's up, guys? John Borelli, he says, start the show early, my son. We got you, my friend. Jerry Tolley, Raider Nation, repping into chat today. What's going on, Jerry? Hope you're doing well, my man. Benico, Canada, he was DMing me today. He was in the live stream. Courtney, as always, the queen, Courtney Burgess, is in the chat Waffle is in the chat. Benico says, what is up, Trace? What's going on, Benico? How you doing, brother? Taco Man 69 saying, hey. Jonathan Thomas saying, sup. Guys, I need a common MVP. It says rapid fire. Type it. Not type it once. I need you guys spamming it like Taco Man in the chat. He's, brrr, he's peppering it in there. Mike, Mike is typing who that. Solo's typing who that. Mikey Taylor getting S. Jerry, Brandon, Jerry, Benico. Courtney, John Borelli, Waffle, Mikey, Jerry, John, Borelli, 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 Waffle, Solo, Borelli, Brandon, Waffle, Mikey, Courtney, Borelli, Benico. Keep them coming. I can't hear you guys. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. We need more Saints fans in the chat. I need y'all to get this thing going. I need you to get this thing going. And as we said earlier, we're going to be talking about Frank Clark. So I need you to let me know, Saints fans, should the Saints go and sign Frank Clark? Type Y for yes, type in for no for me. I'm curious as to what you guys think. Bleacher Report actually put out an article this morning discussing whether or not the Saints should go and sign uh, Frank Clark. They explain why they believe they, they should make a decision on him. And I'm going to give my thoughts. I'm going to break it down, break down what they had to say, and all sorts of fun stuff. But guys, should the Saints type, or sign Frank Clark? Type Y for yes, in for no. Tedra says yes. Michael Clark spamming those S's. Jerry typing yes. Benico, yes, 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 yes. Brandon Perry, any chance we could still get in Ngakwe? Yes, there is still a chance. He is still available. Benico, he's saying yes. Courtney says yes. Michael Merton says yes. Chris just vibing. I know you just vibing, my friend. He says yes. Mike says yes. Taco Man keeps staying, typing Saints. Courtney wants to know, can we get D-Hop? Yes, you can afford D-Hop. But that's going to be the last move you make if you go and get him. I don't know if the Saints would go and get him. I think actually, there's actually an underrated fit and an undervalued fit there. But that's just my opinion. I think that the Saints could still go and sign him. Uh, as he's still available, he's a free agent, was cut, earlier last, or was cut last week, and Saints got money to spend. He wants a big contract. They can outbid a lot of the teams that the that have been rumored to go to D-Hop already. Um, so, guys, keep typing the Y for yes and for no. But, guys, I got to ask you this. It's the poll question. I need you to now let me know in the comment section. Light it up. Light it up. Who's got the better beignets? Who's got the better beignets? I need to know. I need to know. I like Cafe Dumont. I really like Cafe Dumont. Cafe Beignet is good. But I just like Cafe Dumont a little bit better. I like it just that much better. The chocolate milk, the vibes, being right on the French Quarter. It's just so, such an elite spot. And I understand. It's a tourist trap. It's a busy spot. There's a really cool gift shop. I actually got a really badass koozie. Um, last time I went down to New Orleans, the, the koozie looks like a Cafe Dumont beignet mix bag. It's pretty dope. I really like it. Tedra says, I'm from Baton Rouge, so I don't know. Hey, it's all good, Tedra. Where's your favorite spot to get a beignet in Baton Rouge? I've been to a couple good spots down there. I'm having – the names are slipping me, but I've had a couple really good spots in Baton Rouge that had some good beignets. I'm seeing a lot of CDMs. Has a line out the door 24-7. Courtney, you're a, you are so true. You are so true on that. CDM from Jaquavis. Uh, John Borelli says, no idea. John, you and I need to make a trip down to New Orleans, and we can – we can go hit Cafe Du Monde. It's, it's amazing, man. It's amazing. It would be such a fun one. All right, yeah, keep getting the votes in. Keep typing CDM. Let me know, or CB, if you like Cafe Beignet even more. 
Uh, John Burley says, bro, I'm from Cali. I know, John. I know, bro. I know. But you're still, you're still the Saints now dad. You're still my dad. So, I, you know, had to ask. CDM from Romel. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. All right. Who's ready to watch DC4? Who's ready to watch your new quarterback? Who's ready to see DC4 light it up this year and ball out for the New Orleans Saints? Who's ready to see him rep that black and gold like no other? I need you spamming four. Type those fours. Get the fours in the chat. Get the fours in the chat. There's some fours in the chat. There's some fours in the chat. There's some fours in the chat. Mikey Taylor, Romel, Waffle, Taco Man, Jaquavis, Ken, Jerry, Waffle, John Borelli. He says Fresno State alumni number four. He, John Borelli's throwing up that four. Solo straight, Mikey. Everyone's getting the fours in the chat, guys. Shout out to y'all. I'm excited to watch Derek Carr play this year. Courtney's typing it as well. Michael Clark says, I'm hoping to see Jake Hayner grow. Michael, Jake Hayner's looked good. He's looked really, really good. He's going to be a very serviceable backup quarterback in the near future, but long term, I hate to say it, he could be an option. He could be. It's too early to tell, but he could be. He could be. He's not right now. He could be. But, so guys, uh, I just have to make an announcement real quick. So, I know I teased that we're going to be doing the giveaway for the flag today. However, just based on how things are rolling today at the Chat Sports Studios, we got to just kind of get in and out today. We're not really going to have a, too much time to just hop around and goof around and, you know, take Super Chats, get drinks. That being said, though, we are going to count any Super Chats today. As well as the super thanks that came in from uh, that came in from Courtney, that came in from all you guys, all of y'all who have already sent in a super thanks to buy your raffle tickets. Don't worry, we still got your entries. You're in the raffle right now. Your name is in the hat. I promise you, your name. And honestly, just because I feel bad, I'll double up your tickets if you're already super thanks. But I need you guys to go ahead and buy your raffle tickets because we're going to be doing it next live show. I promise we'll do a next live show. We just got to get out of the studio. It's a really busy day, a lot of NBA content, a lot of great NFL content. So we want to be able to open up the studio to more teams, not the Falcons, obviously, but more teams and more channels. So, you know, just I'm sorry. I apologize. John Borelli, right now you have, you sent in a 5 or a 10. I'm going to say right now, John, you have, I'm going to just say you have three. I'm going to say you have three tickets right now. Because I can't remember if you sent a 5 or a 10. I know Courtney sent a 10. So she has six tickets right now. John, I believe you have, you actually have two because you sent in a 5. I'm remembering, you have a 2. All right. So if you guys want to get your tickets in, the best deal is 30 tickets for 50 bucks. Courtney, she's buying a couple tickets. Mikey's buying a few tickets. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. We will make sure that this raffle goes down. We just want to make sure we do it correctly. We want to do our due diligence. That way, all of y'all have the opportunity to win. If you miss this live show, we'll do it next one. We're going to tease it all next week and stuff. But Courtney, come in with a $10 super chat. As always, Sugar Mama Courtney coming through. Right there. This is the Courtney Burgess Happy Dad. We should just call it a happy mom because she's Sugar Mama. Thank you, Courtney, for buying your tickets. You are going to get a bunch of entries. I already know it, Courtney. I have a really good feeling that anyone who sends in a Super Chat right now, John, yes, to answer your question, yes. But if you, I have a really good feeling. If you buy tickets on today's show, you're going to win next week. I just, have, I just have a feeling. I just have a feeling. It's all random. I'm going to spin a wheel and everything right next to me, but I have a good feeling about it. So Mikey Taylor, he's buying some tickets. He's getting in those tickets. He said, let me get them tickets, bro. Who that? Cheers to you, Mikey. And then Ben Nico. Ben Nico. Ben Nico. He sends in 20. He's buying himself some tickets as well. So, guys, thank you all for purchasing your tickets. We'll remind you guys here in a little bit again what the deal is and everything on all that. So just bear with us. But we got some football to talk about, man. We got some ball to talk about. So use hashtag Saints. Send in a super chat. That way you, we can feature you on the show. I got I got my main man, Tex, running the ones and twos for me. Patrick Seaman, producer Seeps, he's out of town right now. But my main man, the legend, Big Tex, is running the ones and twos for me today. So I need you to help him out. 
Type text in the comment section, but also use hashtag Saints or Super Chat to ask a question. That way we can feature you in our mailbag at the end of the live show today. All right. If you hate the Falcons, I need you. Yeah, Courtney, that would, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. I like that. That's pretty funny. Jerry says, keep Jameis for gadget play. Jameis is just a funny dude. He's a funny guy. I love him in the locker room, to be 100% honest. I, I like him as a locker room presence. But, guys, if you hate the Falcons, it's always F them birds. It's always F Atlanta. It's always that city sucks. That place sucks. That team sucks. Imagine blowing a 25-point lead in the Super Bowl. Couldn't be the Saints. Couldn't be the freaking New Orleans Saints. Like this damn video. We have 51 people watching. I need at least 30 likes to get this thing started. We need about 50% audience participation. So I need about 30 likes. I need nine likes to go. So hit that thumbs up icon if you absolutely hate the Falcons just like me. I hate them. I can't stand them. That team drives me crazy. It puts me through a wall just thinking about them. They're ugly uniforms. That ugly logo, that stupid red helmet that they think looks good, that stupid black jersey that they think looks good, that terrible looking stadium that they swear is like top tier, but it's not. If it was top tier, it'd have a Super Bowl win. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It'd have a Super Bowl trophy in there if it was a top tier program or a top tier stadium. Say, Trace, does A.T. Perry make the roster? I think he does. I, I think A.T. Perry's going to make the roster. I think he's going to be the bottom. I think he's going to be like, Number fifty, not I mean not number fifty two, but I think like in terms of the wide receivers, he will be the last one. Like he will be the cutoff of it. But there's still a lot of off season to go. There's a lot of OTAs, a lot of training camp, all that kind of stuff to go. So, all right, guys, three more likes. Hit that thumbs up icon. I know that we're gonna get there. I need three more likes on this video. Without further ado, so just to kind of break down what we're talking about next, we're gonna be getting into some OTAs, winners and losers so far. Now I understand that OTAs are still going on. OTAs are still happening right now. It's going on today. It's going on tomorrow. But right now, we're going to be breaking down the winners and losers so far from the first session and a half, you know, give or take, from OTAs. So I hope you guys are excited for the content. We just hit 30 likes. Trace, what are your thoughts on Gruden helping Derek Carr? I think it's a good move. I, I, I don't I – don't, Derek Carr's best years with John Gruden. You're telling me you wouldn't want him? I understand that he had the email situation. I understand that he may have character concerns. But it's not like that they brought him onto the staff and gave him a job. They brought him in to, you know, help him out, just implement stuff. That's it. it he's, not, he's not, like, on the staff. He's not a paid member of the Saints staff. He's just, he was there to help out. So, it'd be like that. Courtney wants more tickets. We'll pop up that super chat here at the, at the, uh, Next, at the back half of this next segment, or whenever we get, whenever we finish this segment, because we got to get to some football. So I want my main man, Tex, to be able to get out and help out, as well as me. I got some help I need to offer up to the Chat Sports crew. So we're going to get that super chat from you, Courtney, here in just a few minutes, about 10, 12 minutes. So just bear with us, guys. But let's get into, without further ado, let's get in to, to the update or the most recent winners and losers from Saints OTAs. What's happening, Saints fans? I hope you're having a wonderful day. In today's show, we're going to be discussing winners and losers from Saints OTAs so far. So before you guys start coming after me and being like, hey, you can't have losers, you can't do this, you can't do that. Like, okay, just bear in mind, you can have losers. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's the offseason. We're trying to bring you guys fun content. We're trying to bring you guys unique content. So bear with us. Enjoy the ride. Let's talk some ball. So the first winner that I have is obvious. It's Derek Carr, the quarterback, the free agent acquisition, the biggest move that the Saints made this offseason, signing Derek Carr. He is a OTA winner because he has showed a lot of leadership. He's continuing to grow his chemistry with a lot of different pass catchers, and he's running the offense very, very well. He's getting in and out of huddles really quickly. He's able to move, the, move things around. He's able to get things going without – hesitation he's showing good leadership John Gruden came in to help him understand and learn the verbiage and help him you know transform from the or transition excuse me from the Raiders playbook and how they call their plays versus the Saints and how they call their plays so I think that he's a winner because he's just he's continuing to show that this was a good move and in terms of his offensive weapons 
he's building chemistry with almost all of these guys. Now, Michael Thomas has not been at OTAs. However, Chris Olave has. Brian Edwards has. A.T. Perry has. Rashid Shaheed has definitely been there in a big way. We're going to get to him in a minute. Alvin Kamara hasn't really been there. Jamal Williams, you can see the videos on Twitter. You can see the pictures. You're building that chemistry, getting that pass catching up. Kendra Miller, he's working off to the side. He's still battling that injury. You're not battling the injury, but healing and getting healthy from it, working through it. But he's out there, and he's present at OTAs. Juwan Johnson, JJ, my main man, he's a stud. They're already getting that seam work. They're already hit working on hitting the deep ball, hitting out the outs. Taysom Hill, he's your flex guy. He can do it all. Whatever you want him to do, give the ball to Taysom, and he'll get you some yards. And they're not even to mention guys like Foster Morrow who have just thrived at OTA so far. So, guys, it's Cardi Gras season. Ah, it's Cardi Gras season. If you're excited to watch Derek Carr ball out this year, I need you to get them foes in the chat. Type four for me if you're excited to watch Derek Carr this season. If you think he's going to ball out and you think that he's going to be an absolute dog on this Saints offense, type those fours for me. All right, so the next winner, we go from Derek Carr, we stay on the offensive side. We're going to talk about Rashid, the need for speed, Shahid, because that kid, man, he is a winner in a big, big way. He is standing out, and he continues to flash as a pass catcher. His development has been very interesting so far. I love to see how he's gone from a practice squad guy that was a UDFA out of Weber State to let's give him some special teams looks. Deontay Hardy's hurt. Let's see how this pans out, see how things go. He's a kick return specialist after all. Let's see how it works. To now he's putting up yards. Here are stats, like good stats. He had 28 receptions, 488 yards, two touchdowns. The first two touches that this kid had were touchdowns. And they weren't just like, oh, it was like a five-yard slant. No, no. It was like 40-yard run or, in a, or a 60-yard run and a 40-yard pass. Like, this kid is a stud. He continues to show that he is a speedster, he is an asset, and that he is a quality piece and a dynamic piece of the Saints offense. So I'm really excited to see how Rashid Shahid continues to develop and how he continues to improve throughout the rest of the offseason. All right, so from Rashid Shahid, we're sticking on the offense, baby. Let's talk about Jamal Williams because, boy, does he have that dog in him. And at the end of the day, I'm just really excited to see Jamal Williams play. And I'm going to talk about some thoughts. I'm going to share my thoughts, get my perspective, and give you some or reasons as to why I think he's a winner. But before we get to that, I need you guys to do me one quick favor. I need you to subscribe for me. Hit the sub button. We're trying to get to 15,000 subscribers. We're at about 14,600, 700. We're about three, 400 away. I need to get there before preseason week one. Originally, I said we're going week one of the regular season. Nope. I'm kicking that to the curb. I'm throwing it out the door, and I'm throwing away the key. We're going for it week one of the preseason. So subscribe, lock us in for Saints news, videos, live shows. This video was filmed as a part of our live show. So subscribe, turn on your notifications. That way you never miss any of our awesome content that we put out all throughout the week. All right, so for Jamal Williams, as to why he's a winner, we're seeing more and more progress, and we're seeing more and more growth of Jamal Williams being a pass catcher. His pass catching ability was used a lot in Green Bay at his time whenever he came right out of college at BYU. He is going to be an asset in this offense. Alvin Kamara, as we know, has a suspension looming. Could be anywhere from four to six games. Got to let the legal process play out. Got to see how these things kind of go. But Jamal Williams... Not just as a rusher. He, you know, everyone knows he led the NFL in rushing touchdowns last year with 17. But not only did he do that, he also had 160 receptions in his career for his receptions. 1,191 stats. Eight touchdowns, and he averaged just under eight yards per catch. Man, this guy is so good. He's so dynamic. He's such a fun locker room guy. He's such a fun just player. I mean, look at his face mask or look at his visor. He's got the anime visor going on. He's a stud, man. I cannot wait to watch Jamal Williams wrap the black and gold on Sundays. It's going to be just such a fun, fun time for New Orleans. And if we get hard knocks, man, we're in for a treat with him and J-Bo. All right, let's round things out with a shocker. Dennis Allen. Yeah, he's up there. 
You can rub your eyes. You can squint. You can turn your head. You can refresh the page all you want. But I got Dennis Allen as an OTA winner because so far he has had phenomenal attendance. He's had great attendance. The first session out of the 89 players on the roster, they had about 80 to 79. So they're only missing 9, 10 people. In the most recent session of OTAs, five to, or about, 10, or about 14, 15 people missing. That's still really good, guys. That's still a lot of players still there. It seems to be that there's a lot more respect for Dennis Allen um, from the locker room, from the team, from media. Just across the board, it seems like Dennis Allen is showing his leadership. And he's showing that, hey, last season, it wasn't good. I'm learning from my mistakes, and I want to improve, and I want to make this team a successful franchise and get them back into the position that we all know and love on top of the NFC South. However... Could he be entering the seat this year on the hot seat? I think that he has a lot to prove. He's not going to be able to win seven, eight games and just have his job. In my personal opinion, unless you win the division and make the playoffs, I think that you can't say his job is safe. But guys, it's not about me. What say you? It's all about you. Is Dennis Allen on the hot seat this season? If y'all have ever seen part of my take, y'all know about hot seat, cool throne. So type H for he's on the hot seat. Type C for now, nah, he's on a cool throne. He's calmed down. Things are all good. Don't you worry about it, Trace. I need you to let me know because I think he's kind of in the middle somewhere. Honestly, there's one guy on the hot seat. It's Pete Carmichael. Yeah, the offensive coordinator. I think he's one to watch out for. All right, let's burn through these losers because, man, I love talking ball, but we have been going on for a while because I just love to talk, and that's just my own damn fault. Traquan Smith, wide receiver. He is a loser at OTAs because he wasn't present at the most recent uh, session of OTAs. Brian Edwards, however, was there. He continues to show flashes. He continues to show why he was brought in as a free agent this past season. He keeps showing reasons as to why he could beat out Traquan Smith for a roster spot. And we've shown this graphic before, but I'm going to go back to it because I really think it tells the tale of why Traquan Smith is a potential roster cut. Brian Edwards in 2021, last year he was with the Falcons, barely put up any stats, so we're going with his 2021 stats. 34 receptions to 19, 571 to 278, three touchdowns to one, 17 yards just under versus 14 and a half just over, and then a 62.4 PFF run blocking grade as compared to Traquan Smith 60.6. And why I hit, like emphasize the PFF run blocking grade, Traquan Smith's biggest redeeming quality is that he's a good run blocker, but Brian Edwards is a little bit better. So let's get into the next guy from Traquan Smith to a kicker. Blake Groupie, the UDFA that was brought in out of Notre Dame. Fun fact about Groupie, he actually is the all-time leading scorer at Notre Dame. And, uh, and I think that's just an interesting stat. It's an interesting thing. But I'm going to get into why I think that uh, Blake Groupie is a loser at OTAs. But before we get to that, I bet that you guys are so dang excited to watch this NBA Finals. I know I am. I bet you guys are excited to watch maybe a little bit of NHL. Maybe you guys enjoyed watching the XFL. Maybe you guys like boxing. Maybe you like F1, NASCAR. Point being, if you like any of these sports and you want to bet on them, BetUS is the place to go. Use chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code chat125 for 125% deposit as a bonus. Meaning, you put in 100 bucks. BetUS gives you a free $125 to game with. That means you can lay down that lettuce on any game you want. So get started. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code chat125. All right, for Blake Groupie, he is a loser because Will Lutz is kind of looking like he might be back. He was hitting, I think he said, I think I think the, the report was 15 of 15. Um, and it wasn't just like play, field goals. It was, or you know, at point PATs. It was field goals. It was long distance field goals. It's from all over the spot, all over the field. So Will Lutz is showing signs that he might be back and he might be fully the player, clutch Lutz, big nuts Lutz, or whatever you want to call him. He might be finally back to that spot that he was before he got injured. And Blake Groupie, he has missed a few field goals at OTAs. The point being, this is Will Lutz's job to lose. So as long as Blake Groupie doesn't go out of his way in order to, or not Blake Groupie, if Will Lutz doesn't go out of his way to just, just, pardon my French, just crap the bed, I think he's going to make the roster. I think he's going to bleed out beat out Blake Groupie, but guys, Blake Groupie is a loser, and also, so is this guy, Roger Goodell, 
Look at that clown. Look at that fraud. This guy sucks. This guy is a fraud and he is a loser. And he is today's biggest loser. If you've ever seen Impractical Jokers, he got all the he got all the X's. He didn't complete any of the challenge. He is tonight's biggest loser. Because the Saints are gonna be a good team this year. I'm so tired of media and journalists and YouTube and ESPN and all these idiots try who clearly don't know ball try to say that the Saints are gonna be a bad team this year. This is simply not true. The Saints are gonna be a quality team. They're in a terrible division and a really bad conference. I think the Saints are going to be a phenomenal team this year. So Roger Goodell can get over it. He can get over the fact that he hates the Saints, and he can get over the fact that at the end of the day, Saints are making it back to the playoffs, and they're going to be back at the big game, I believe, in a few years. So get those F Rogers in the chat right now. I need you typing F Roger if you think the Saints will have a good season. As y'all know, we like to have a little bit of fun here. So, guys, hope you enjoyed the content today. As always, y'all stay golden. We'll catch you next time. Perfect. So we got the F Rogers in the chat. Did not expect this. F that bot. F Roger. F Roger. F Roger. I love it. Also, some breaking Saints news. This is why you subscribe, why you join our live shows. Breaking Saints news from Field Yates. They signed veteran tight end Jesse James. So if you don't know anything about him, I'll just give you a quick little rundown on him. He played his college ball. Give me one second, guys. I'm just pulling up his stuff. He, he played his college ball at Penn State. He played with the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Detroit Lions, Chicago Bears. He was a free agent. In terms of stats, um... Didn't record any stats last season in 2021. He had eight or seven receptions on eight targets, 62 yards, one touchdown. No, th yeah, one touchdown. His best season came in 2018 with the Pittsburgh Steelers, 30 receptions, 423 yards. Shut up, Siri. Two touchdowns. So he's a guy that is clearly going to be a um, depth piece. Just a body, a roster, a camp body, I think, honestly. And then also, in, uh, in more news, Saints waived kicker Alex Quevedo, and they signed also Jake Bargas. Bargas? Bargas? B-A-R-G-A-S. Bargas. So, here you go. There's just some news that kind of came out here in the last, uh, like, two minutes. So, there you go. Get the F. Rogers in the chat. And, guys, we do have a mailbag coming up here in just a little bit. Use hashtag Saints or Super Chat to get on the show. Ask us a question. Give us a take. Propose a trade idea. Propose a player you want to go sign. But I do know we had a couple Super Chats come in. Yeah, I was going to say, could we pop those? Do you want to trade Jameis for Hunter from Romel? I'm going to get to that, Romel. I'm going to get to that, my man. Also, really quick, guys. If you're not following me on Twitter, what you doing? What you doing? I'm going to drop my Twitter link in the chat a couple times. So go follow me on Twitter, and I'm going to give a shout out to everyone who follows me in the next minute. In the next minute. So to Courtney Super, while we get to that, I'm going to show some love to Courtney. because She's a real one. She wants more tickets. Courtney, you got more tickets, sweetheart. Of course you get more tickets. We're going to make sure you get all the tickets you pay for. You're getting all of them, Courtney. And then Benico, he really, really wants that damn flag. He bought another set of tickets. So, Ben Eco, you're getting tickets too, my friend. Don't you worry about it. But, guys, give me a follow on Twitter. I'm uh, Ben Eco. Will you talk CB depth? If you use hashtag Saints, I can. And, text. I'm going to move over um, a depth, the CB depth chart for, for us. It's updated and stuff, so it should be good. Um, it'll be a depth three, I believe. And it will just, it, it, if he asks a question, we'll pop it up in the mailbag. Um, if not, no worries. I'll just have it in there for you it, just in case we need it. Um, all right, CBs. Give me one second, guys. You can see another reason to subscribe. You can see how this you know, show flows without any sort of a rhyme or reason. We just talk ball, do things on the fly. We improvise, adapt, and overcome. Manico, another $5 super chat from you. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you guys for sending in those donations. We always appreciate it. I hope you guys understand it's not just... Oh, hey, yeah, money sent to Trace and money sent to Tex. No, it goes right back into getting you guys more content, better content, and better graphics, better audio, better lighting, more studios. It goes right back to getting you guys more content. So 
Yeah, so if if uh, Ben Nico use hey Ben Nico use hashtag Saints and ask will you talk about CB depth? Use hashtag Saints or super chat and say something about CB depth and we can talk about it. So if he sends one in, cool. If not, it's all good. We don't have to talk about it. Just have it down there for you. All righty, bet guys. So I actually didn't pick up any followers on Twitter. Kind of a uh, kind of embarrassing. Shout out Brian Smith. He just recently followed me like as we were live, <clears throat> but. It's all right. It's all right. I'm a, I'm a one tough cookie, if you will. I'm one tough beignet. Do we know who won the draw yet? So, David, I hope you guys don't get mad. But we're kind of in a little bit of a studio shortage today. We have a lot of content we're trying to put out. So, oh, we got another, t another super from John Borelli. So, David, we are going to do the raffle on the next live show. However, any tickets you buy today are worth double the value. So if you send $5, you get two tickets instead of one. If you send 10, you get six tickets instead of three. If you send in 20, you, you see what I mean, okay? John Borelli, I want to donate my tickets, Trizzy. All right, John Borelli, DM me who you want to donate those tickets to. You, we follow each other, so you just can send me a DM. Um, just let me know who you want to send them to or put it in the chat. Uh, probably easier if you DM it to me so that way I can, you know, write that down and put it with, uh, put it with those people's... Um, Tickets that they already got, if they already have some. So just let me know, John Borelli. Thank you for sending in a super chat and always donating and always talking, um, hanging out with us, man. It really does mean the world. Shout out to Dave Saint Sover. Sover, he gave me a follow. Appreciate you, brother. Out of Lake Worth, Florida. What a guy. What a guy. What a stud. So David, we will be doing the live, the giveaway, the next live in not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after. I know, you have to wait a while, but you can buy double the tickets right now. So, Ben Nico, he sent us in a $5 p to the Super Chat. Will you talk CB depth? Ben Nico, if you hang out with us for about 10, 15 more minutes, I'll get to this question. I'll give you, like, a full in-depth answer. Um, the CB depth right now is good. I think that you're probably set. I like so what the CB depth chart looks like, um, but I'm going to go into depth in this in our mailbag because I like this question, and I really appreciate you sending in donations. So, thank you, brother. Take your time. Thanks, Benico. I appreciate you, brother. All right. So let's talk about some UDFAs that could make the roster. I'm going to give you five UDFAs. I believe that could end up making the final 53-man roster. Let's have some fun, guys. Let's talk some ball. Let's get into it. Welcome into today's edition of Saints Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, as always, Trace Gerard. In today's show, we're going to be discussing some UDFAs that may make the roster. Five UDFAs specifically that I believe will make the roster. And just kind of as a preface, we'll get to that in here in a second. But let's talk about it. Who has the better beignets? Cafe Dumont or Cafe Beignet? I'm going Cafe Dumont every single time. I understand it's a tourist trap. I understand all that. But man, it's so good. The vibes are immaculate right in front of the French Quarter. Like, it's just a good spot. It's such a good spot. So... Let me know. I always get mine with uh, chocolate milk. I'm not a big black coffee guy, but I always go with chocolate milk, big old plate of beignets. So let me know. CDM or CB for the better beignets. And as for today's show, I'm going to be discussing the five UDFAs I think will make the final 53-man roster. And just so you guys know, we're not going to be talking about UDFAs from last year's class. So guys like Lucas Kroll, Smoke Monday, obviously Rashid Shahid is going to make the roster. But... We're not going to be talking about guys like that. We're going to instead focus on guys like Jerron Cage, some of the other names I'm going to get to, but I just mentioned him, so let's talk about Jerron Cage because he was a defensive tackle brought in out of the Ohio State University. The New Orleans Saints and Ohio State pipeline is thick, it's long, giggity, and it is a very healthy relationship from the Buckeyes to the Saints. The, silver, or the scarlet and silver turns to the black and gold, very easily. Jerron Cage, last season in 2022, he only had 12 tackles, a sack and a half, and two and a half tackles for a loss. However, the current defensive line depth chart is very, it's not weak, it's just thin, I would say. And you can look at all these names and be like, oh, but Trace, there's all these names on here. These are all good players. These are all guys who make NFL rosters. And I'm not saying that they're not good players, but I just look at the defensive interior and I don't know if I necessarily trust Malcolm Roach to consistently put up numbers. I don't know if I can say the same thing about Heflin. I don't know about the same thing about Prince, Amelie Prince. I'm not, again, I'm not saying that they're bad players. I'm just saying 
The Saints like to use their depth at the defensive line. They like to rotate the defensive line a lot. And when you have a guy like Brian Brzee and Nathan Shepard, it, Brian Brzee specifically, he's young. Nathan Shepard, he's still pretty young in his NFL career. So having just another player um, in the depth chart, I don't think is out of the, out of the question. And at, let's be honest, guys. The Saints' interior defensive line wildly underperformed in 2022. I mean, it was bad. It, was, it wasn't good. It, it was very unfortunate because we did have to see guys like Shai Tuttle and David Onyemata go. David Onyemata really found his stride in the latter half of the season, in my opinion. Um, I, I just I think that Jerron Cage has a not an easy route to make it, but he has a route that's definitely there. It's clear. Just produce. Be the guy that they want you to be and fit into the depth chart well. And I think that Jerron Cage could definitely make the roster. So guys, before we keep this thing rocking and rolling, don't forget to subscribe. We break down Saints news, rumors, analysis. We go live. We put out shorts. We have a community tab. Post on social media. We do it all here at Saints Now by Chat Sports. So be sure to lock us in. Subscribe. Turn on your notifications because that way you never miss a video. You never miss an update. And you never miss a chance for us to go live. All right. So we went from Jerron Cage. Now let's stick on the defensive side of the ball. Nick Anderson. He's a linebacker out of Tulane. And let's call it how it is. This guy's story, incredible. He has an amazing story. He played a little bit at Jones Co uh, County Junior College. I'm going to talk about some of his story here in a second, but just look at these numbers. Dude's a tackling machine. 113 tackles, two sacks, four pass breakups, zero interceptions. That's fine. Two forced fumbles. That being said, in 2018, he came out of Jones County Junior College. He became a staple on the Green Wave defense whenever he transferred to Tulane. He wanted to go play SEC football. He's from Mississippi. He's a guy who wanted to go and play under the big lights in the big stadium with the loud fans. But his coaching staff said, focus on what you're doing. You need to go and perform. And at the end of the day, you can go and be a very impactful player and play all the time if you go to a school like Tulane. And that's where he ended up. He was a two-star recruit coming out of high school, which is interesting. And he was the number 41 overall player in Mississippi. I find that very interesting. And just more on why I think that uh, Nick Anderson could make the roster. The Saints are thin at linebacker. And Anderson, he's an excellent leader and great culture guy. Now, he is a little undersized. But when you look at the depth chart, it's thin. It's thin. Like, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong, please. Pete Werner, if he can stay healthy, he's a great linebacker. Zach Bond, don't know if I would say the same thing about him. He's a guy who I don't necessarily absolutely love getting a lot of touches, a lot of time on the field. Zach Bond is just a guy who, he's just not lived up to what expectations. I, I, I truly do believe that DeMarco Jackson could have a breakout season this year. Ty Summers, Andrew Dowell, these are all guys that I think could do well. Nephi Sewell, Ryan Connolly, Anthony Orgy. Um, but then you also have Nick Anderson on the step chart. So I think that this is a very good chance for Nick Anderson. If he performs well, continues to perform well at OTAs and at training camp, I think that Nick Anderson will make the roster. But what say you, Saints fans? Will Nick Anderson make the roster? Type M for make, type W for he won't. You see M, W, let me know. Let me know. Who, is he going to make the roster? I'm going to say M. I'm going to type my M's in the chat, but I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear from the Houdat Nation because the show is all about you. All right. So we're going to flip over to the offensive side of the ball. Mark Evans, the second. Don't get it twisted. He's not Mark Evans. He's Mark Evans, the second. The offensive tackle out of University of Arkansas, Pine Bluff, down in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And investments were made here. Mark Evans is the highest paid UDFA in this year's class. The Saints invested in him. The Saints gave him a good amount of money. They want him to be an impactful player in New Orleans. They want him to be a player that is rotated through or rotated through and gets to be on the field barring an injury, barring, you know, bad play. He's a player that I think the Saints are pretty high on. And when you take a look at his PFF grades, they're not going to jump out at the screen at, screen at you and make you think, oh my gosh, how did this guy go on draft? This guy is insane. What the heck is going on here? I mean, a 62.9% or 62.9 overall PFF grade, 63.5 run block grade, 64.4 pass block. He gave up three sacks. But again, I think that the Saints 
could actually be a team, or not the Saints. I think that Mark Evans could actually be a player that makes the Saints team. Mark Evans, also just to kind of lay things out for you, he will likely move from the left tackle position that he played to left guard. So a common theme for the Saints offensive line, it's a lot of uh, diversity. It's a lot of different traits. It's a lot of different looks. There's a lot of different <laughs> positions and versatility that the Saints have. Nick Saldaveri can play literally anywhere on the line. He was one of your draft picks in the, mid in the day three. Uh, I believe round four. Yeah, round four, day three is the first pick because Saints traded up to go get him. Mark Evans, Mark Evans, the second, excuse me, he will likely move from left tackle to la left guard. So look for that. The transition's already happened. He's starting to look well from the reports I'm seeing and stuff. But let's see if he makes the roster. I think that he actually has a pretty good shot and the Saints paid him because I think that they believe he could be an impactful player. All right, so let's talk about it, guys. I, I'm getting a Chris Olave jersey. I'm getting the Chris Olave jersey. I told you, I'm getting it. But if you haven't picked up a jersey yet, go to chatsports.com slash Saints jerseys. We got men's. We got women's. We got any player you want. We got home. We got away. Look how clean that is. We got color rush. We got throwbacks. We got any player you want. Any team. Or not any team. Any Saints team, but obviously. But we got any player you want. Point being, you got to use this link, chatsports.com slash Saints jerseys, to take advantage of the of the deal that we're trying to get there. We're trying to get you guys all Saints jerseys. So get like me. Go get yourself a Chris Olave jersey or a Derek Carr jersey, Tyron Matthew, Jamal Williams, whatever. I don't care. Just go get a jersey and use our link, chatsports.com slash Saints jerseys. The link will be available in the comment section in the description of today's video. All right. So we went from Mark Evans, who wore some black and gold or black and yellow in college, to another guy who wore some black and gold in college, and that's Anthony Orji, the linebacker out of Vanderbilt, the former Commodore. He is a player I have a lot of faith in. A lot of NFL analysts and a lot of draft experts actually had Anthony Orji uh, mocked in like the sixth round, seventh round. Like He was just expected to be drafted. However, he fell. Didn't get drafted, and the Saints said, I'm greedy. Give me him. I want him. So, and this is why, though. Look at the stats. Look at the stats. They're impressive. 106 tackles, six and a half tackles for loss, a, one sack, one pass breakup, one interception, and all this done in 12 games. And it's not like Vanderbilt is the cream of the crop in terms of quality college football programs, but they do play against the cream of the crop of quality college football programs. They're playing against the likes of Bama, which they're not that good this year. LSU, Georgia, Florida. They play these kind of teams, and they and he put up good numbers. So I think that Anthony Orgy is a quality player, and he's really athletic, and the measurables are definitely worth noting. Now, obviously, there's a little bit of a lack of size here, but he is wildly athletic. The six foot one, 230 pounds, I get it. That's a little small for a linebacker, especially at the NFL level. But the 40-yard dash... The 10-yard split, that's impressive. And his relative athletic score, his RAS, if you don't know anything about it, it's basically just his combine grades, all that stuff, put together to see how athletic you are. And it's on a scale of, you know, like 0 or 1 to 10. He got a 9.23. Dude's an athletic freak. He's very athletic. He is undersized. And my take on it, he could really bring some special teams ability. He could bring a lot to the special teams side of the ball. And now I understand that I don't that he's a linebacker and I understand that he there's a need there but I just don't know if the Saints are going to rely on Anthony Orgy to go and um put in consistent reps at the linebacker position just yet I'm not saying it won't happen but right now it feels like it's a little too early in his career and I think that he could be a quality special teams player he plays fast he plays aggressive he plays hard so this is a guy that if he plays well on special teams or he shows a lot of promise in special teams at OTAs and at training camp, I expect Anthony Orgy to make the roster. But guys, I need you to shout him out for me. Who's your favorite UDFA from this year's class? There's a lot of good ones. There's guys like Sir Roderick Thompson running back out of uh, Texas Tech. My personal favorite, Lou Headley out of uh, Miami, the punter, the tatted, the, er, the tatted, the tatted Aussie. I love that guy, dude. I'm praying that he makes a roster. I will take two punters. I don't care. I don't care. Shoot the messenger all you want. I just like Lou Headley. I think it'd be fun. So let me know who's your favorite UDFA from this year's class. There's also great guys like Shaq Davis, 
uh, Anthony Orji, any of the guys we listed today. Or there's even this guy, Malik Flowers. He's our number one guy as a UDFA that I believe will make the roster. He's a wide receiver. He's a kick return specialist. He is a player that lit it up when it comes to the kick return. I mean, in his career at Montana, um, at his career at Montana, Malik Flowers, his return stats were pretty impressive. He had 92 attempts, 2,569 yards, seven touchdowns, which if that number looks familiar, ties Rashid Shahid's um, kick return touchdown record from Weber State. And then he had, he had just under 28 or 28.9 yards per uh, kick return on average. The kid's a stud. And he's a player that I truly think can make a really good impact. And if Flowers makes this roster, it opens up Rashid Shahid to do so much more. It opens him up to be able to be an offensive threat. Not just a kick return specialist, not just a punt return specialist, but Malik Flowers gives Rashid Shahid the ability to focus on the offensive side of the ball and to be more productive, more explosive, and give him more opportunity there. So my take on just this as a whole, Rashid Shahid and Malik Flowers to round things out. Shish, shish, ah, sorry, guys. Shahid, his ceiling is so high already. He has so many great qualities. He has so many great attributes. And honestly, having two versions of him, awesome problem to have. I would, I would love to have this problem, to be honest, because you got two speedsters, two great, uh, uh, just great runners, finds open space. Duh, it's an easy move. Great problem to have. I think it would be awesome to see Malik Flowers make the roster, and I truly do believe he will. So honorable mention to these four guys, Lou Headley, my good dude, Ozzy out of uh, Miami, down in Florida, punter. He's tatted head to toe. He is just so cool, man. He is the coolest guy in the NFL right now. Shaq Davis out of South Carolina State, wide receiver. He's a standout. He's a guy that a lot of people are high on. I really want him to make the roster. It's just a very competitive wide receiver room, and I think Malik Flowers might edge him out. Alex Philstrom, he could also find himself making the roster as a backup center, as a depth linebacker or lineman piece. Anthony Johnson, the DB, he could also find himself on the roster in case if there's any sort of injury issues, there's any sort of, you know, lack of production or concerns or whatever. But these are just a few honorable mention guys um, that could make the roster for the 53-man final roster in New Orleans. All right, let's get that out of here. Let's let you guys get back to your evening. Let's let you guys get back to your wonderful days. How many UDFAs will make the roster? Take a guess for me. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you for making Saints Now a part of your day. Thank you for making us or for watching us no matter where you are or how you're tuned in. We always greatly appreciate you. Y'all stay golden. We'll catch you next time. Boom. We got some super chats come in. We got some super chats come in, guys. Y'all ready to go. And I hear Jack Sperry in the Steelers stream. Use guys. Use guys. Let's go. Use guys. What's the worst Midwest dish? It's got to be Skyline Chili, right? Or Snicker Salad. The hell is that? The hell is that? Just, I don't know, man. Just give me a damn Snickers. I don't want salad and Snickers. Whatever. All right. Mikey Taylor, he sent a $5 super chat. Snoop. I can't talk today, man. I can't talk today. This is bad. How many interceptions will Alante Taylor have this year? I think he has... Mm, I'm going to set the over-under at five and a half. I think he could have... I think he... Nah, that's high. That's high. I'm going to set at three and a half. I think he gets four interceptions. I think he gets four interceptions this year. We got a lot of very, like, this damn close to getting him last year. So I think that he actually makes it happen this year. David Rowe! Got you on Twitter, brother. Shout out to you. Cheers, David. Cheers to you, my man. I'm going to give you a follow back just because you sent in the super chat. Um, yeah, yeah. If if there's a, if there's like a good, if there's like a foot good football question, throw it up. If not, you know, just the, I think the CB one is probably like that, and then the one Mikey's last one. So yeah, yeah. I think we should be good. Um, there. I, I'm not worried about the time on that either. So. Yeah, for sure, for sure.
All right, next one coming in from Alex Cortez. Sorry, if you guys can't hear who I, if you think I'm just talking to myself, I'm not. I'm talking to my main man, Producer Pex, because we're trying to come up with our game plan. Again, you guys get to see it go live, how it happens. We just get on here, and we just start chopping it up. We just start chopping it up, talking ball. So if that's not a reason to subscribe, I don't know what is. Alex, sorry I'm late, boys. Better late than never. Did I get in for the raffle of the flag? Yes, you did, Alex. However, bad news. The raffle will be next live show because we have a little bit of a studio shortage here today. We have a lot of great content we're trying to put out. The NBA draft is coming. The NFL uh, OTAs and practices are all underway. We got a lot of live content we're putting out today here in the Chad Sports Studios. So what I'm doing for you guys, I'm making you a deal. Any super chat you send in is double the value of whatever it is. So right now, Alex, a $5 super chat was supposed to be one ticket, but you got two tickets. And I just truly do have a good feeling that whoever sends in Super Chats and gets their tickets today, they're going to win it. They're going to win it, right? I, I just have a feeling they're going to win it. So, um, yeah, so here's our raffle tickets. If you guys missed out on it, here it is. $5 is actually two tickets. $10 is six tickets. $20 is 20 tickets. $30, 30 tickets. And the best value $50, you get 60 tickets. You want 60 tickets? I mean, if you buy 60 tickets, you're, I, I don't know how you wouldn't win it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not promising you're going to win it. We're spinning a wheel and everything. It's 100% random. I just don't know how you would lose if you had 60 tickets. That's just me, though. So if you want to buy your tickets, hop on in. Courtney, she just bought two more tickets. She's bought. Courtney's been peppering the tickets today. She wants all of them. I think it's going to be between... Man, Benico, I think it's going to be between Benico or Courtney. Mikey, you might be up there too, man, but they got a lot of tickets. They got a lot. And you only need one, but I think Courtney's, Courtney's feeling lucky. All right, guys, so we're about to get into a mailbag. We're also going to talk about Frank Clark. Ayo! Let's go. We keep getting those super chats coming in. We're going to hit a mailbag here in just a second. Use hashtag Saints better yet super chat to ask a question. If you super chat, you get to skip the line. It's like the fast pass at Disney World or Six Flags or whatever amusement park you like going to. Courtney, $10. Cheers to you, girl. There you go, Courtney. Good stuff. Appreciate you always donating. You got another set of tickets, girl. You're about to go buy all the tickets, ain't you? Between the two of you guys, y'all are buying all the damn tickets. You need to save some for the rest. No, I'm just kidding. Buy them all. I don't care. All right. This is just for a beer drink and more tickets. Here, I'll do you one better, Benico. I'm going to give you Chug. Boom. I'll get you, bro. All right. Use hashtag Saints. Send in a super chat like Benico. Mikey's buying more, too. $128 on the day, and we don't even have a real super chat menu. We're getting you guys tickets to get the flag. We ain't even doing the raffle today. Ah! It's getting crazy, guys. It's getting crazy. Let's go. Let's go. Give me some tickets. I want all of them from Mikey Taylor. Go away, Siri, not you. Not, I'm not talking to you. All right. Man, it's getting wild. If you guys send any super chats, during the mailbag, we actually, this is a segment where we can pop them up. So if you send in a super chat, if you send in a big one, like if you send in like a 50 or $100 super chat, you might see me just get absolutely crazy and absolutely weird. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Just saying. So let's have some fun. Let's take your questions. But let's also talk about Frank Clark because Bleacher Report put out a pretty interesting article. I think y'all will find just as intriguing as I did. Welcome into today's show, Saints fans. I'm your host. Trace Gerard. Before we get started for our mailbag and taking your questions and talking about Frank Clark, I need you to do me one quick favor. I'm going to make a deal with you guys. I'm going to make you guys and I'm going to continue to put out some great content. In return, I need you to do something for free for me. Hit that thumbs up icon and like today's video. Let's go. Let's have some fun and let's talk Frank Clark to New Orleans. Because Bleacher Report, he just they just put out an article suggesting that the Saints should sign defensive end Frank Clark before training camp. And as for what Bleacher Report had to say in their article and about the New Orleans Saints, 
They said, well, Foskey could make an impact in his rookie season. The Saints should add an established veteran to line up opposite of Cameron Jordan, who's going into his age 34 term. At 29 years old, Frank Clark is on the back end of his prime years, but he could help a pass rush and make plays in the backfield. I like the idea of bringing in Frank Clark. And just for some chat stats for you, we're bringing back this segment because I, I personally like it. I think it's kind of fun, and I know you guys enjoyed it too. So for the chat stats in today's segment, the Saints had the fourth lowest pressure rate last season. That's embarrassing. That's bad. It was just a 17.5% pressure rate. That's terrible. However, you know what's not terrible? It's Frank Clark. Frank Clark, he's a good player. He doesn't play that wonderfully in the regular season. I'll give you that. But during the postseason, he lights it up. And in terms of his regular season numbers, 39 tackles, 8 tackles for a loss, 56 pressures, 5 sacks. I want to just re-hit this pressures number. It's 56. The Saints were the fourth worst in the NFL. The Saints will not be the fourth worst if you bring in Frank Clark. And here's even more chat stats because I'm just addicted to this part of the video. Frank Clark has 93 sack, sack yards in the playoffs with the Chiefs from 2019 to 2022. So his sacks alone almost backed up an entire football field, or it backed up the off, opposing offense, an entire football field, which is insane. In the AFC, the Chiefs, they play good teams. They play the Bills. They play the Bengals. They play what of, whatever other team that they play in the postseason. I know they always have the one seed, so they never have to really play in wild card weekend, but play a lot of good teams. So I think it's interesting. I think it would be a really good idea to bring in Frank Clark, and I really agree with Bleacher Report. And honestly, I would rather go get a guy like Frank Clark than Yannick Ngakwe purely because I like the postseason um, boost that he provides. And I think that the Saints are in a position to find themselves in the postseason again. So just for the experience and just for the – I mean, not just for that, but that's a big reason why I think the Saints should go and get a guy like Frank Clark. So, guys, if and when a move happens with Frank Clark, if and when anything happens around the New Orleans Saints, if there's news, there's updates, there's any juicy rumors, any juicy reports, anything fun that's worth talking about, we're going to be right here covering it for you guys. So lock us in, subscribe today, hit that big red sub button, and don't forget to hit that noti bell because otherwise, how are you going to know when we post a video? You won't get a notification, so hit it, that sub button, turn on the notification bell, and lock us in for Saints content every single day. All right, so let's take some of your questions. Let's. This is one of my favorite things we do here at Saints Now by Chat Sports. We take super chats. We take questions from our live audience, which we are live every other Wednesday. So we will be live not this upcoming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. We're also going to be doing a giveaway raffle, so be sure to tune in and subscribe for that. Benico Canada, he says, hashtag Saints. We talk about the cornerback depth. Absolutely, my friend. And because my main man, producer Tex, is just such a damn good producer, he has a depth chart right here for you. So Marshawn Lattimore, he's obviously your CB1. Paulson Adebo, he's battling with Alante Taylor for CB2. Bradley Roby right now is your starting nickel guy. Alante Taylor was taking snaps, actually, in the nickel at Saints OTAs earlier in the second session. So I think that this is an interesting move that could potentially happen for Alante Taylor because maybe he moves to the box. I know that Alante Taylor has said he's more of an outside guy. I believe that he's more of an outside guy. However, he's aggressive, he's scrappy, and he's a guy that maybe in a pinch could fill in for the nickel. But I think that overall the depth chart is fine. You got guys like Ugo Amadi, who's repping number zero, which is kind of cool. You have Marshawn Lattimore. You have Isaac Yadam. You have a lot of quality players in this depth chart, not to mention a great defense around him. So I think that this cornerback depth is fine. I wouldn't do too much more to add to it or take anything away, to be honest. All right, next one in from Mikey Taylor. How many interceptions will Alante Taylor have this year? So... We're just talking a lot. Let's talk some more a lot. I love a lot. Taylor. Why not? Remember when everyone was saying he was a bad draft pick? That was hilarious. That was so funny. Everyone's an idiot except for Saints fans. All right. I think Alante Taylor, I'm going to set the over under at three and a half. And I think that he gets the over. I think he gets four interceptions this year. I think that he had a lot of opportunities to get interceptions. He had a lot of very close calls to get interceptions last year. Didn't happen a lot. So obviously, 
Um, you want him to have better numbers there. But I think that Alante Taylor will definitely take steps. I think he'll definitely have a breakout season this year, and I think that he'll be a phenomenal player. I'm saying four interceptions. But you guys in the comment section, let me know how many interceptions you think Alante Taylor will have as well. All right. From Nola Living. I like that helmet, man. Ah, oh, dude. I love the throwback uniforms. They're so cool. All right. Should the Saints, or hashtag Saints, should sign Indomitian Sue? I mean, I guess. He's not that good, though. He's just not. And, again, the numbers, maybe they're a little bit skewed. Because with the Eagles last season, they had the best defensive line in the NFL. And it's not even up for a debate. It's not a question. They just simply did. Had more sacks than any other team by, like, 10. Um, and Dominican Sue just didn't get a ton of looks there. He didn't get a, a ton of time contribute, but like, he's still a guy that you have to account for on the defensive line. He's a little bit older and not a little bit. He is old. I remember as a kid being like, huh, I wonder if any day in my life I'll be able to spell out and Dominican Sue just anytime I want. I can say I can do that now. A five-year-old me would be really proud, but I don't know, man. I don't really think and Sue makes too much sense per, I personally wouldn't. I'd rather go and get a guy, if you wanted to go sign a veteran DT, go get Unique Ngakwe. He's just got a little, he has a lot more left in the tank and he has a lot more juice um, to offer to the Saints defense. But I want to hear from you guys. Be honest. Shout out producer Tex again for having it going for us. Would you sign Ndamukin Sue? Type S for sign, type P for pass. Let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and let's get into the next question. All right. Ooh, David Rose, $10 super chat. Where do you see the greatest improvement with the Saints this year? And have we done enough to make it a winning season? I'm going to answer the first, second part first. Yes, the Saints have done enough to have a winning season. I think that just – I may be wrong here. I'm fully prepared to be on old takes exposed. I'm fully prepared. But just based on the Saints' schedule, just alone on the schedule, you should have at least six wins. Schedule's bad. It's 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 a very easy schedule. You should have at least six wins no matter what. I think that I set my wins. I predicted that the Saints are gonna have anywhere from eleven to twelve. I think ten to twelve is kind of the kind of the uh, the threshold of where you might be in. But I think that the Saints are gonna have a winning record. And the greatest improvement, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say a quarterback. That's a cop out. I'll say the quarterbacks and running backs. The defense is still good. The defensive line lost a lot of players, let's be fair. But I think that the Saints quarterback room is way better than it was last year. Keep in mind it was Jameis Winston, Andy Dalton, and Jake Lutton or Luton. And now it's Derek Carr, J Bo, Jake Hayner. Significantly better. Running backs, you go from Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram. Eno, you know, Benjamin, David Johnson, and you know all the free agents that they signed to kind of rotate through. Now you go to Alvin Kamara, has a suspension looming. Obviously, you're not going to have him all season. To Jamal Williams, who led the NFL in rushing touchdowns, and Kendra Miller, who also had 17 touchdowns at TCU last year. Third round pick. Going to be a great player once he's healthy. So I think that the offensive side had a, added a lot of juice to it. Quarterback and running back are my two biggest improvements. All right, Romel, the legend. Romel Duran says, do you think that we could trade Jameis for Hunter Renfro? I like this question. So I've actually seen a lot of a lot of buzz, a lot of reports about this. So the things that I've seen, it's Jameis Winston and a pick for Hunter Renfro. Because right now, Jimmy Garoppolo may not actually be quarterback for the Las Vegas Raiders, despite them, you know, making a free agency splash and getting him because they couldn't bring hold on to Derek Carr. I think that Jameis Winston, I mean, if you're the Raiders and you're desperate, like, why not? Like, it makes sense. They need a quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo failed his physical. Like, it makes sense. Hunter Renfro has really good chemistry with Derek Carr, so I think that it makes, it might be an interesting one to hit. Um, I think you'd have to include a pick in there just to kind of even out the value because it is a backup quarterback who will be a starting quarterback, theoretically, for the Raiders. But Hunter Renfro is still one of the better parts of that offense. I would love to get Hunter Renfro. And I think it would be a lot of cool. But or a lot, it would be really cool to see that. And I think it would be a lot of uh, 
A lot of first downs, if that was the case, between him and Juwan Johnson and Foster Moreau. All right. Subscribe for these five things. Daily Saints coverage. We were putting out videos almost every single day. We get more subs. I promise you I will put out videos every single day, and I will not miss a single day. If, we can, if you want more team news, updates, rumors, whether it's free agency, trade, injury stuff, also Alvin Kamara's legal situation, we're going to have you covered. It's also informative and entertaining content. Subscribe for entertaining and informative content because not only do we want to talk ball, we want to give you guys something that's going to help you learn the game of football, help you learn about the Saints, but it's also going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have a few laughs. We're going to share a few beers. We're going to have a good time. But we also have live shows. This mailbag was filmed as a part of the live show. And we also give you free videos about your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. So lock us in. Subscribe today. Join our squad. Join the Golden Gang. Hit that big red sub button and turn on your notifications. Jerry Tolley. Real quick, this one's for you. Raider Nation, what's going on? Real ones now. Real ones know about Mitchell Renz because, you know, Jerry's a Raiders fan. Mitch is the Raiders guy here at Chat Sports. Cry about it. I don't know what to tell you. What is your DC4 stat prediction for 2023? So I think Derek Carr will oh, – dude. I don't want to sound – I don't want to get too excited and I don't want to sound like an idiot. I think more than 25 touchdowns. I think 20, 28 touchdowns, eight interceptions – I'm going to say around 3,000 yards. Ah, dude, that's a lot. I'm going to say anywhere from about 2,500 to 3,000 yards. And I think the Saints win 11 games. Um, there you go. I, I think Derek Carr has one of his better seasons he's had in his NFL career with New Orleans. I think he revives his career. I think he shows um, a lot of, or he proves a lot of people wrong. And I think he shows a lot of interesting things as long as, um, as, long as he stays healthy. That's the biggest thing which he hasn't had a problem with. All right, last question coming in today. If you could choose between signing D-Hop or Frank Clark, who would you take? Don't do this to me, man. Don't do this to me. Because I'm one greedy SOB, and I just want all the wide receivers. I really want D-Hop, man. I don't think it makes sense, though. I really don't. Because you could sign Frank Clark, have money left over to address in free agency, and, you know, worst comes to worst later in the season, or if you want to make a trade at the deadline, you can still pay that player. If you go and sign D-Hop, you're pretty much maxing out your cap space for the season. It would be fun to have D-Hop, though, alongside Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid, Foster Morrow, Juwan Johnson. I mean, it would just be awesome. I'm going to say Frank Clark, though, because I think it's a better fit, and I think it makes more sense for the Saints. But you guys let me know. Would you take... D Hop or Frank Clark, just let me know. Pick the out of the two. Because I'm curious what you guys had to say. I'm going to be definitely looking to see what y'all have to say. And before you get on out of here, after you let me know who would take between D Hop and, and Frank Clark, I need you to predict the Saints record for me this season. I'm going with 11 wins. Bear in mind, 17 game season, 18 weeks, but 17 game season. I'm going 11 and 6. That's what I've said uh, since our schedule has been released. I want to hear from you, though. Who that nation? I hope you enjoyed today's content. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Y'all stay golden. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to turn on your notifications. And guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. And we'll see you next time. Stay golden. Perfect. Perfect. Ooh, Courtney. She sent in a 10. Did we hit that? We didn't hit that. The D Hopper Renfro. Ooh, okay. I'm going to hard pause here because this is a good question. This is just a juicy question. I'm going to hard pause. Wh if Whenever you make the cut, could you put this question in the back, like as the last question or whatever? Cool, cool. All right. All right, one more question coming in from Courtney, the legend here at Saints Now by Chat Sports. She says, D-Hop or Renfro? I heard Adams also wants out. Then, D-Hop or Adams? So, I'm going to go with... I know I said I want Frank Clark over D Hop. I don't I feel like I can't pass up D Hop twice though. I'm gonna say Hunter Renfro because yes, it's a trade, but he's cheaper. He already has the chemistry and 
He has that connection with Derek Carr. But in terms of Devontae Adams, D-Hop, I'm taking Devontae Adams. I'm taking Devontae Adams. I'm not even thinking about it. I'm not even blinking an eye, and I'm not even going to question it. And, man, I'm showing a lot of hate to D-Hop, but I, I would love him. It's just like Hunter Renfro, it makes too much sense. I don't know. But, Courtney, I appreciate you asking that question, and uh, I thank you for the $10 donation. All right. So predict the Saints record. I see 12 and 5s, 12 and 5s, 12 and 5s. I see a lot of 12 and 5s in there. 12 wins, 12 wins, 12 wins. Y'all all pretty much are saying what I'm saying. All righty, fellas, ladies and gents, lads and lairds, homies and not or homies and bromies and I don't know what I'm saying. We're getting out of here though. We're getting out of here because we got some work to do here at the Chat Sports Studios. So I'm going to set a one-minute timer. Last chance to get in your tickets for the raffle. Last chance to get your tickets for the raffle. Remember, a $5 Super Chat gets you two tickets. A $10 Super Chat gets you six tickets. If you send a $50 Super Chat, it gets you 60 tickets. All tickets are double what they are worth in terms of the Super Chat menu. So help us out. Let us know what you guys are thinking. Let us know if you enjoyed the content today. Let us know if you enjoyed the content, but last second to get all of your Super Chats in. If anything comes in after our delay, I'll write it down. Don't worry. It's fine. We'll show it in a video in the future. Benico, he's getting another set. He wants another set of tickets. He's got a $5 Super Chat on it. Thank you, Benico. I'm going to I'm gonna cheers you. Benico, he wants that damn flag, man. He wants that damn flag. He wants it real bad. Double the Super Chat value. Anytime you send in a $5 Super Chat, you get two tickets. $10, you get six tickets. $20, you get 20 tickets. $30, you get 30 tickets. $50, you get 60 tickets. Great value there. All right. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and at the buzzer, bang! We see David Rowe and Courtney Burgess get in those super chats. Shout out to you guys. Y'all are going to get your tickets. We're going to double up for you. Don't you worry about it. AFX Baker Mayfield sucks. He hasn't even completed a pass at OTAs pretty much. Sean Watson. Saints beat the shit out of him. And I'm not going to say the next part what I was thinking. But he did bad things. Allegedly. Um, Courtney, $5 super chat. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. AFX, dude, bro, you know Baker Mayfield sucks. He couldn't even stay on a roster last year. He was on two different teams. Mikey, last one. Your pride, Mikey, it's in the mail. I dropped it in the mail a little bit ago. So I'm assuming it should get to you very soon. It should be, it, it's in the mail. I dropped it in the mail. Shout out to the U.S. Postal Service for not getting my main man, Mikey, his pennant, his Saints pennant. Come on. Come on, government. Figure it out, Biden. I don't know what to tell you. Mikey, I, you know, I, I swear, in all seriousness, I did drop it in the mail for you. I, it, it's, I, I, we, put the right, we put the right address. I promise you it should be there soon. It, it should be there very, very soon. I promise you that. If you have any other questions or if you have any like concerns about it, feel free to DM me, man. Like you, we talk, we chop it up all the time. I have no problem talking to you about it. You know, helping, you know, talking through all this and communicating until you get it because we really want you to get that um, pennant. You you earned it. You won it. You you get it. It's wildly overdue. It's just it's in the mail. It's in the mail, and the mail's taking a long time. So I'm sorry about that, man. Um, but it'll be here soon. So Chase Seniors on another show. Um, Okay, bro, just checking LOL who dat. Mikey, appreciate you, man. Again, thanks for all the support, guys. Man, it's hot in the studio. They're going to get on out of here. I hope you guys had a wonderful day. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Uh, where my last question at with an answer? Did you sit? Kendall Taylor. Uh, hold on, hold on. The, with the roster we have now on offense and defense, how many points do you think the offense will put up if the defense could hold up their end? Um, how many points do you think the offense will put up? So I think the offense will average anywhere from 24 to 35 points. Like I think that 
an average, you know, not every single game, but I think this this is a very explosive team. They're going to put up a lot of points, and they're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of impact on the offensive side of the ball. It's going to be up to the def. Well, last year the problem was that the offense couldn't put up points. The defense could hold them, but the offense couldn't put points up. So I think that the offense should put up about 25, uh, about 20, 24 points here and there, give and take. Um, every about every week, you know, obviously you have bad weeks, you have good weeks, you have weeks you put up. Alvin Kamara rush, rushes for six touchdowns. It happens. So I think that it'll be a good uh, season for the Saints this year. Kendall Taylor, so sorry we missed your question earlier, but thank you for asking again. Um, Y'all have a wonderful day. Me and Tex are getting out of here. If you guys need to get anything, any other information, subscribe, DM me on Twitter, DM me on Instagram, all those good things. Hope you guys had a wonderful day. Y'all stay golden. We'll catch you next time. Peace.